Hey guys, today we're going to look at the uh, Greenlight Great Gatsby uh, Duesenberg 2SJ. That's modeled after the uh, Duesenberg seen in the 2013 Great Gatsby movie. First, we're going to look at this product and see if it's accurate to the movie that it claims that it replicates. And then we're going to talk about its role in the movie and talk about what I think about the movie too. So, right off the bat, is this model faithful to the movie version? It is not. This is one of Greenlight's laziest uh, replicas I've seen that's purported to be from the movie. It's not. Uh, the license plate, I believe, is accurate. But back over here, there would have been a little luggage rack, a little steel uh, grill back here. But it's not there. That That's no big deal. But one of the distinguishing features of the movie version, there's actually two of them here, uh, this spare tire and the one on the other side would have had a, a, a silver uh, cover over it. And more importantly, in the movie, Leo DiCaprio, who plays Jay Gatsby, specifically says, this is a supercharged version in Old Sport. There would have been those those eight exhaust pipes sticking out on four on each side. Because this car is supercharged, uh, this car needed a uh, an exhaust system, an external exhaust system, with the, the flex pipe headers. So, immediately you can say this is not very faithful. From what I understand, this is just a reskin of another Greenlight Duesenberg diecast. And the fact that they just painted it yellow and put a license plate on it was extremely lazy. Sorry to say, I'm not very happy with this, uh, with this car. Because in the 2013 uh, Great Gatsby movie, this car does play a significant role. And I believe Greenlight missed an opportunity to make a very distinctive diecast. But yeah, just put the freaking silver cover over this and put the little, uh, the, the flex pipes coming out. That would have been so easy. So, in that regard, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty disappointed. Looking at the interior, it's hard to tell what color the interior was. I, I could have sworn it was more black. Um, but this one looks to be like an off color of black, but, you know, I won't slam them on that because you can't really see it in the movie. So let's talk about this car in the movie. So the actual uh, Duesenberg SJ didn't come out until, what, 1932? And I believe the uh, the movie takes place in the early 20s, maybe 1922, um, something like that. So this car in itself is anachronistic of the time period. But I am really okay with that because I actually had to look that up on the internet to see. So I think most people wouldn't even know that this car did not belong to this time period unless they looked it up or someone told them to look it up. That's me. Um, now this movie does uh, feature this car for about 10 minutes. The movie itself it runs for about 2 hours and 20 minutes about. So you would think that 10 minutes out of that... that uh, entire running length isn't too much showtime, but this car is actually very important to the story. And it shows up in about, what, six different uh, scenes in the movie. The first time you see it is when uh, Jay Gatsby shows up at uh, Nick Carraway's place, and then he takes him out for a very impromptu random uh, cruise through New York. And it's in that scene where he's trying to convince uh, Nick Carraway that all the lies about him are untrue. Unfortunately, during that time, uh, Gatsby is telling even more lies about himself, which uh, Carraway doesn't actually believe, but he's definitely enjoying the ride in this Duesenberg. And then, yeah, you see the uh, car appear much later on when, uh, when Daisy wants to go to town. And she only does that to uh, break up the big uh, argument that's happening between her husband, uh, Tom Buchanan, and Jay Gatsby, who has feelings for her. So she uh, introduces the idea that, hey, let's go to town. So they take off in this car. And uh, in that scene, it's actually Tom Buchanan driving this, uh, this Duesenberg. And then you see, you see this car appear later on after, after they're, uh, they're done in town. And Daisy's very uh, frustrated at this point. She cannot think straight. And... Uh, that's when they when they leave town and drive back to their homes, and that's where the big turning point in the story is. 
because that's when Daisy drives this car. And spoiler alert, Daisy uh, kills uh, Tom Buchanan's uh, mistress, Myrtle. And that's when you see this car appear again. You see it appear in a flashback when uh, Daisy's actually driving the car. And uh, she hits Myrtle. And it's really not anyone's fault because Myrtle thinks it's Tom Buchanan because he drove it earlier. And that's when she saw him driving it. So she, she jumps right in front of the car and boom, she gets nailed by it. And then you see the car again when uh, Gatsby is spying on, on Daisy to make sure Buchanan isn't abusing her. So you see it for a few seconds as he drives off and leaves uh, Nick Carraway, who, uh, who tells Jay that he'll look after her. And then you see the car uh, later on when, uh, when Jay Gatsby is, is cleaning the car, like cleaning all the blood off of it. But yeah, so when Daisy hits Myrtle, that basically ends uh, Gatsby's that basically ends his uh, relationship with her and also it, it ultimately ends his life when Daisy hits uh, Myrtle. Because Jay Gatsby, as optimistic as possible, he takes the, uh, he takes the fall for, uh, for Daisy's reckless uh, driving, which isn't really reckless because, as I said, Myrtle does jump in front of this car. So, uh, yeah, this movie where this car appears in, it's one of my favorite movies of 2013. I remember also liking Oblivion, uh, Man of Steel, Star Trek Into Darkness, uh, Catching Fire from the Hunger Games. And that's also when uh, At the World's End, that comedy comes out with Edgar Wright's uh, comedic flair. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I love this movie and that's why I'm so critical of the work that Greenlight did on it. Like, seriously, I think they just reskinned this. Because you know they had a, a another uh, a Duesenberg diecast, which wasn't movie-related. It looks exactly like this. Except that one was, what, silver or gray? This one is yellow, and that's all they did to it. They painted it yellow. Didn't bother with the uh, the silver uh, casing over the spare. Didn't bother with the uh, with the supercharged pipes coming out of it. So yeah, I I have no problem telling them that this is a lazy effort by by Greenlight. Oh, I didn't show you guys. Sorry, this this thing does actually open. There you can see the engine. Now this is a a Phaeton. Phaeton is a different than a convertible because a convertible has a uh, it has some some manner of a fixed roof, even though you can you can fold it back. And it uh, also a convertible has uh, these sliding windows that pop out of the car's body, which the uh, a Phaeton does not have that. So in case you ever hear Phaeton, that's what a Phaeton is. It's not to be confused with a convertible, but very similar to a convertible. And it's also a, a dual cowl uh, riding system. So the the passenger seat in the back is actually separated from the driver's seat in the front by the by the bulkhead and honestly the other side of this uh, engine does open up but I, I haven't been able to open up both uh, both covers at the same time because just because it doesn't seem to work and I didn't want to break it trying to attempt it but yeah like if it's if it's if this wasn't supposed to be from the movie I would say this was a, a pretty good model but the fact that they slapped Great Gatsby all over this box, it it says that they were trying to cash in on the movie, and that really offends me. But yeah, this is this is a pretty cool. Uh, the the movie car itself is cool because not many people think too much about the uh, the car's role in Great Gatsby. But it actually does play a big part. 